this weapon, guys. The goal today is to min max, squeeze every stat that we can out of it. Just wind it up. And I'm gonna be really breaking this thing down because there are some special things going on, some interactions. I wanna talk about what the god roll is, if there's more than just one. And I'm gonna be talking about PVE and the Crucible today. It's rare that we see a weapon come onto the scene this strong PVP wise. From an archetype that's historically just right on that midline, there's been a lot of changes to these, and especially with this overall sandbox recently, with those changes, it's done a lot for it. Prosecutor is legit, and that feels weird to say. It comes back with an origin trait, an arc precision auto rifle, and the origin trait on this weapon is great. Crossing over, this weapon has increased range and handling on the top half of the mag, rounds for the bottom half deal increased damage. So as discussed, it works on two curves. We have a base of 32 rounds, so the first 16 are light, the bottom 16 are dark. For the top half, the top bullet is plus 10 range, the last bullet of light is plus 5 range. In between is scales, so bullet 32, 31 goes plus 10 range plus 10, plus nine, plus eight, seven, seven, six, five. And then just kind of stays at five for the last, you know, three or four shots before it crosses over. So another way to look at it, this thing is always gonna have at least plus five range in the top half of the magazine. And the first six and more are gonna be higher than that. Really, really good. Now the bottom half starts to scale to 3% more damage and in game PVE or the Crucible. At this point of the magazine, if you're within range, you're getting a little bit more damage, but if you're outside of range, it's helping keep fall off. It's really good. We're gonna dive deeper into that as we go on. Since this update, the auto rifles are feasting. I've had multiple Wii Rans just with Prosecutor alone, and it's been with various roles. First, the recoil direction. Though it takes a second to get through, I feel you need to know what's going on here, because weapons got deterministic recoil, and yet again, the recoil direction stat that you see is a lie. So here's the scenarios for it. I'm gonna say what I like best. I don't think that the base 69 is bad at all. It trails to the right, comes back to the midline, then goes left a little bit, and in practice, that actually works really, really well. With the bullet magnetism of the weapon itself, their strafe, your strafe, it keeps fairly straight, which is a good thing. But I do have issues with the recoil direction numbers 79 and 84. This is because they just trail to the right. And what you have to do with that, you have to do horizontal recoil control, and that's never good, ever. Or B, you need to use your strafe. It isn't terrible, you can make it work, but I think I like 94 the most, followed by 99, 100, and 69. Like all of these are really, really good. They perform the best for me, and these are the best recoil patterns for it. In the third column, Discord, Dragonfly, Gut Shot Straight, Keep Away, Rewind Round, Zen Moment. Final column, Cascade Point, Frenzy, Golden Tricorn, Tap the Trigger, Target Lock, Volt Shot. Out of the gate in the third column, let's talk about Keep Away and just how cool this perk is on it. Keep Away gives you plus 10 range, plus 30 reload, and as you're firing consistent sustained fire, you get 5% actually cone growth, meaning your follow-up shots are just getting more accurate, all being 15 meters and out from a target. Great perk, but on this, if you hit a threshold of 80 or 85 range, 85 range actually, like this one right here. Keep away in this origin trait, the first couple of bullets are plus 10 range, well, still in that light top half. And then as you're approaching crossing over, it's still plus five range. So with this min-max threshold, if you hit 85 range, essentially it's a 100 range auto rifle at all times. Because keep away out of the gate gets you to 95 range, crossing over picks up the rest. And while you're in dark, the damage is making up for the missed range that you're getting. It essentially equates to it always being 100. It's one of the best, if not the best PVP perks for it. But since keep away gives such a massive bonus, with this crossing over trait, even 75 range on your stat bar, 80, it's more than okay, because that's still getting to 90, 95, and 100 range. And then, oh yeah, you have the reload and accuracy as well. It's top tier for it. Zen moment, it's another great option. And I'm not gonna say that this is a bad option or you should go keep away over this because it's gonna depend on the player. You get anti-flinch. If you've been using ARs, they feel phenomenal. And with Zen Moment, causing damage with this weapon reduces recoil and flinch over time. So with each hit, goes to five stacks, you're getting anti-flinch, you're getting visual weapon shake, visual reticle bounce. So essentially, it's appearing more stable. It is more stable. It puts it on a rope. So something like this, which is tap the trigger Zen Moment, taps plus 40 stability, gives accuracy help, lasts for 0.6 seconds. It's a laser beam that basically just can't be knocked off of your target even if they're hitting you something hard with a hand cannon. If like flinch is ever looked at, Zen Moment gets better. We're gonna be talking about a number of roles today, number of things that you can do, but something like this is up there. It adds up on paper, in game, it performs. It's extremely good. There's things like Discord Cascade if you're a mad lad, but I wanna focus on Target Lock because Target Lock, pound for pound, might be the best perk for it. And here's why. Target Lock, unlike with an SMG, is fully unlocked with an auto rifle. It gets the damage sooner meaning in the sandbox, less abilities, more primary play, it comes up all the time. 
We have a new sandbox. I did a lot of testing. I got some crazy numbers here, and I think that you're really going to be interested. So first, let's establish the base TTK is 0.8 seconds. It's a seven bullet kill, six crit, one body. This is just at base. Now, resilience tier two and below, you can five crit, two body. It's not happening. You're not going to see two resilience on the rig. But check this out. Target lock shows up on the sixth bullet ramps up from there. So first thing on the base target lock, five resilience and below, you can six crit for a 0.67. And since the sandbox changed, every single resilience check, I checked myself. So in this sandbox, tier five and below, six straight crits. Tier six resilience survives that, but if you're in the dark part of the magazine from crossing over, you can six crit with that. Next with target lock, tier nine and below, you can five crit two body. Whereas before, they need to be two resilience or below. So that's just gonna be an easier TTK. Since these changes, a lot of players aren't running tier 10, but at tier 10, even with target lock, it's back to that base six crit, one body. And these 450s are a dream to use. So maybe flinch, maybe the first couple shots are off. You can mostly five crit, two body, a lot of players. That's a big deal as far as the easier TTK most of the time. And you get a faster TTK for players caught slipping with five resilience and below. But a new challenger approaches. The second weapon ever to have it, the other's Unending Tempest, and I have the same role on Unending Tempest, it's Gutshot Straight Target Lock. Now, Gutshot Straight, remember they buffed it. It's really not noticeable, it's not that bad. You get increased body shot damage, but you get a decrease in target acquisition. So if you really want to, you can compensate that with targeting on your helmet. But with Gutshot Straight Target Lock, the body damage goes from 21 to 25, and that changes like everything. It still downs five resilience and below with six straight crits, but Gutshot Straight Target Lock is gonna down every resilience, five crit, two body, even tier 10. So no matter what, five crit, two body. But it goes even more than that. The next threshold is tier six. If your opponent's resilience is tier six and below, you can three body, four crit for a 0.8. And it's even gonna be possible if they're like tier one resilience, tier two, you could four body, three crit. So this roll right here, you've been seeing some gameplay. If five crit, two bodies, anything, tier six and below at four crit, three bodies, tier five and below at five crits, it's a powerful roll. And with target lock, the help from the range, the help from the damage at the end, can and does shift TCKs, it does help. It's wild. So mine has 65 range, basically 70 range, which is more than fine. But in the end, you could get a roll that has 85 range, 90 range on the range bar with gut shot straight target lock. But those are going to be the three suitors with target lock. Zen moment, gut shot, keep away. All are great, but all do different things. Next, rewind rounds. This is more PvE specific, and yes, it's definitely worth a pickup with a cool interaction. When the magazine is empty, it refills from reserves based on the number of hits. For rewind rounds, the application here, the best pairing is Frenzy. Frenzy has always been a solid PvE option. Be in combat for 12 seconds, you get 100 handling, 100 reload, 15% more damage. With rewind rounds, when it procs, it keeps putting Prosecutor back in the bottom half of the magazine into dark, meaning the extra damage from dark is added to Frenzy. Like right here, I test a lot on this guy. It takes a lot for a primary weapon to one clip him. But with rewind, over 40 bullets are in dark and the end result, Frenzy on average is about 18% more damage because of dark. 18 and a half or so averages about 18. And that's almost getting back to what the original Frenzy was when it came out a long, long time ago. Very cool, it's more than usable. And since Rewind Rounds works like this with dark, the crossing over trait, look for and consider Rewind Golden Tricorn, Rewind Target Lock, damage perks for it. It works out great. Then we get into Dragonfly. And Dragonfly being in the third, big, big deal, huge deal. Because remember, Dragonfly's damage takes on the effect of the other perk and whatever you have on your weapon. This goes all the way back to the old school rigging nail, trust, or even recently, tyranny with incandescent dragonfly. It spreads it, right? With the column perks, like here's an example, dragonfly frenzy. Now, I don't have a prosecutor with dragonfly frenzy, but I can show you with Nessa. Same perk combination. Dragonfly is gonna do its thing based on the weapon type. So you'll get a number from it, but when a damage perk is applied, such as frenzy, Frenzy's damage is added to Dragonfly. It's very good. Same thing goes with Golden Tricorn. Again, I don't have a Prosecutor, but I can show you Age Old Bond with Dragonfly Golden Tricorn. One headshot immediately goes to times one. So times one's already up. Your primary ammo is doing 15% more damage and your Dragonfly explosions are also doing 15% more. But even further, if you get to Golden Tricorn times two, that damage, which is 50% more, that damage also goes into the Dragonfly damage. It depends on how close the enemy is to the explosion, but that damage transfers over. Dragonfly Frenzy, Dragonfly Golden Tricorn, top shelf for it. 
and you're combining it in the light and dark of crossing over, it works out. But then we have Dragonfly Volt Shot. Amazing perk combination, same perk combo as Nation. On mine, I have over 2,500 kills with it. I use the thing. A big part of using and choosing a legendary primary weapon in PVE is gonna be ad clear. And if you have added utility on top, that's a big bonus. Like this thing, you're seeing Nation, Prosecutor has the same combination. You're spreading Jolt, condensed Dragonfly damage to do more damage in that area. It's good. Don't let anyone say that this is a backburner roll. It isn't because then we start getting into the utility of it. More damage from Dragonfly to surrounding enemies. You can place the Jolt on a larger enemy, switch weapons like to, let's say, Dragon's Breath. You know, have Jolt spreading from that main target. If it's sustained with something like Dragon's Breath, it's just keeping that whole loop going. Very, very good. There's utility. And then there's the fact that Jolt itself in general stuns Overload. So yeah, this is a great combination. And of course, other things too. Keep away Volt Shot. That's a fast reload, more range. This thing's ready to rock. It's up there it's worth your time. And real quick, like PVP, one of my favorite roles has been Keep Away Frenzy. This is that 100 range while in Keep Away while having Frenzy. And it shows just how durable the roles can be on this thing. I've had more Wii Rams with this role than any other one. Because side note, if not on this, like in your next play session, try a Frenzy weapon. Could be a 180 Scout for a three tap, whatever. Because with all the Scouts, Jade Rabbits, how people are playing more primary play, less abilities, Frenzy comes up. It's easier to get going than it ever has been. And on Prosecutor, you can start doing six crits for the 0.67. And I've used Radiant throughout the video too. The 0.67s are there. And the 450s, again, they're just dominant. I mean, I rolled and rolled for this positive. And this one right here is one of the more dominant weapons I've used this season. Perfect Float got a change. It feels amazing. And of course, Kill Clip. Got high range, high cows. First game I had with it, a 47 bomb. Now, is it better than Prosecutor? Not necessarily. They're, they're very different. And importantly, both do things that the others just simply can't do. That's always a good thing. Regardless, it's the real deal when it comes to PVE and the Crucible. So for the scorecard overview and conclusion, for PVE, I do give it five stars. It's the second one I've ever given it to. Here's why. Collectively, the perk combinations that it has with its origin trait, it's special. And importantly, there's no other legendary arc auto rifle I would take it over. I mean, you look at Dark Decider, Arc Logic, Shadow Price, Sorrow's Verse, all of them. It's better than all of them. And in PvE, in any case, we're using Legendary Arc AR, this is the one. That could be with an activity that's calling for it, such as champions, modifiers, whatever. Because otherwise, it just has flat out good combinations. It gets you through a lot if you choose to go Legendary AR and use your exotic for, let's say, a Dragon's Breath. It's a workhorse. For the Crucible, four and a half out of five. And it's four out of five at this time, at this current point. And I haven't given a five out of five yet in PvP. Like, that's reserved for the Igneuses. Like, the crazy stat splits, crazy perks. At this time, it's right in the thick of it. I'm out dueling various weapons, meta weapons with it. While using it, others are using it. I'm getting out dueled. When you look in Trials, over the weekend, it was the number one weapon as far as kills. An auto rifle, Prosecutor. Trials is just a small snapshot of the week. Doesn't really define the meta. Prosecutor's new, it's shiny, it's doing very well. Sure, but... I believe that all of this is justified and confirmed because right after it is Amit, another 450 that's five seasons old. The ARs are good, y'all. They're dropping people. And we look at regular PvP, quick play, and competitive. Prosecutor's in the top three, alongside things like Conditional Finality. It's doing really, really well. The main use? Universal. The fun factor? Five. There's something about shooting 450s, man. They're smooth. It's got an amazing sight with the 1.6x zoom. The combos are fun. They're powerful. Feels sturdy and strong. Build flexibility, five. Any class can use it, any character. For the must-have score, four out of five. It depends on the value that you're placing on an ARC Legendary Auto Rifle as far as PvE. I place it high because it comes up all the time. I mean, literally, as I'm finishing up this commentary, the Lost Sector is Overload, which Auto Rifles are Overload in the Artifact. If not, I have a Volt Shot version of Prosecutor that can stun, and it's ARC Shields. Something like Prosecutor is really nice to have. It comes up PvP-wise, We've seen target lock on a 450, Horror Story. I think that this is better than Horror Story. I have one that's dynamic sway target lock, but with Prosecutor, the range that it can get, the origin trait helping all of that, whether it be keep away target lock, I showed you the gut shot interaction. It's a player, it's a force. Even if you go just pure dueling, like Zen Moment target or Zen Moment tap, many can work. They did a really good job because Prosecutor comes into a perfect storm. The adjustments to target lock, the adjustments to ARs a while back, the recent primary weapon focus sandbox, the 14% more damage to crits in this sandbox to compensate for the health increase, the perks that it has, a perfect storm for greatness. It really is. And they just said in this week in Destiny that Prosecutor is one of the weapons that when Final Shape releases on June 4th, retroactively can be enhanced. So it's gonna get even better. 
try to get one, and I believe that April 2nd is the next time Prophecy comes around on the rotation. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. The goal here today is I wanted you to see the many, many things that it can do with its many interactions, because somewhere in here, I think no matter what type of player you are or where you like to play, I think there's something here for you. I do. I've been using it a lot in PvE and the Crucible, and it's putting in a ton of work, so I would love to hear your thoughts, and hopefully some of the things with target lock and the origin trait, I hope some of that helped you kind of figure out what you want in this thing. Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.